Hello. In this lecture, we're going to talk about programming for challenging behavior. Just a few notes before we get started. I want to emphasize to you that this lecture is simply an overview. It's really not intended to give you all you need to address behavioral concerns. You really need to remember to collaborate with other professionals such as behavior specialists, speech language pathologists, psychologists, even occupational therapists to form a complete behavioral plan. Um, and I really think um, in order to feel qualified in the area of autism that you need to take a course in positive behavior support and really become familiar with behavioral methods. So what precipitates challenging behavior? Well, that's a really, really important question when you're addressing challenging behavior. I want you to remember that all behavior is communication. And I feel quite strongly about this, as you can tell by the slide. But every behavior that you see is communicating something to you. So even if someone comes up and hits you, it's not an appropriate communication, but it is an, a communication. It's telling you they don't like something. And so part of our job is to really look at what is that behavior telling us? What is it communicating? So what does behavior communicate? It can communicate so many different things. So that's why we have to be a really good observer and a neutral observer to try and figure out what it is communicating. It can be tied to their internal state, um, something that's happening neurologically in their body. It can tie to hunger, sleepiness, other kinds of internal states. Preferences, something that they like, something that they don't like response to external events, um, something happened that they really want to do or something happened that they really don't like, relationships to the consequences that are happening within their environment. Um, behavior can communicate so many things. So our first job is to figure out the functions of that behavior. So here are four um, functions of behavior attention or access, um, avoid, escape, and in fact um, in several studies by um, Miranda, Pat Miranda, she looked at the functions of um, behavior in children who had um, moderate to severe um, disabilities and she found that much of their really either aggressive or self-injurious behavior was for avoidance or escape. So that's a function we really need to pay attention to. It can be to t solicit something that gives them pleasure, or to solicit pleasure from another human being, or it can be pain attenuation. You know, if something is, is very loud and very unpleasant, maybe it's to stop that. So the first thing on your plate is to determine the function of the behavior. And one assessment that helps you do that is called a functional behavioral assessment or an FBA. And if you're going to be involved in this, I really um, recommend that you get well trained to do FBAs and you work with a behavior specialist or a psychologist who is well trained um, in functional behavioral assessment. because. Um, coming up with something, a, a faulty hypothesis, means that you're going to then um, do something to intervene that really won't meet the needs of the child because you're not addressing the right function. So doing an appropriate FBA is at the heart of the matter. So the first thing you do is really specifically define the problem. And then you start gathering data and you gather data surrounding the child um, for the whole day. You, you want to gather their activities, you gather who's with them, especially around the challenging problem, um, what kinds of, of um, toys or objects are around during that time, what medications is the child on, what time of day is it, when does it happen most frequently, all of those things objectively are recorded. And from that, 
you gather a hypothesis about when the challenging behavior occurs in order to get what, right? And when does it happen most often and when is it least likely to happen? And that helps you provide yourself with a framework in which to attack the challenging behavior. Once you have a hypothesis about when this happens, um, it say it happens most likely um, in the morning during math, um, especially if they're mowing the lawn outside, then you want to systematically modify those things, you know, give them, um, maybe let them do math at a different time of day, or um, modify the amount of noise that's happening. So you systematically modify the antecedents, what happened before, and the consequences so you can test your hypothesis.